What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're going to be checking out and reviewing the brand new Glorious Model D Wireless. Yes, just like when you're newly single, no more strings attached to this D. So today, we're going to check it all out for you guys. Pros, cons, talk about my experience, my opinion, all that good stuff in case you're trying to pick up the new Model D Wireless, or if you're looking to upgrade from your current gaming mouse. All right, so checking it out, just like we saw Glorious do last year with the Model O to Model O wireless, now we have the ergonomic shape with the Model D wireless here on deck. It does come in both a black and a white color option in both matte finishes, no more glossy, and it's advertised as 69 grams with like a two gram variance. On my scale, comes in right at 68 grams. So just slightly lower than advertised and definitely still on that lightweight spectrum here. And getting it unboxed, yes, it is pretty much identical in terms of you know shape and design to the original Model D, just now wireless, obviously. However, visually, there is one change you can note by the original Model D. We no longer have the honeycomb cutouts on the left and right clicks. So it ditched that here. I think it's also a much more cleaner look without those honeycombs in the paddles. So a uh, big fan of that. And again, still very, very lightweight. But yeah, same shape and size you're familiar with. Now, as for dimensions, it comes in at 61 millimeters wide at the front, 67 millimeters wide at its widest point in the back, is 128 millimeters long, just around 20 millimeters at the front and stands 42 millimeters high at its highest point. So on the more medium to larger side for a mouse, and if you're someone who's a big fan of like the Model D minus or the Model O minus and you're holding out for a potentially minus wireless version, that could be a thing. We'll eventually get a smaller one, I assume, uh, just probably not anytime soon. And just real quick before we move on, inside the box we do have the USB receiver, obviously for the wireless connection. It does come with a USB-C adapter if you want to use USB-C cable and you know kind of extend that range if you want it closer to your PC. That also means yes, obviously the mouse is USB-C. An additional pair of their Model D skates to kind of widen the foot underneath. And your typical literature, the startup guide, and the Odin sticker. And a friendly little reminder to remove the film underneath. Now it's not a feature, obviously you might be rolling your eyes at that, uh, but you would not believe how many times I've seen people, whether on Reddit or in room tour project submissions, still have the film on their mice without knowing they should take it off the feet. So uh, yeah, now you know, take them off. And I'm sure some of you are guilty out there of it too. Talking to you. Now one of the new things this mouse has over the previous Glorious Mice is brand new switches. So they're using their own proprietary switches I believe. In the past they were Omron 20mm, these are their own 80mm clicks. They said these switches are made in collaboration with Kale, so I'm happy to see something new and not just, you know, a rehashed shell and all internals from the previous mice. We'll do a quick sound test so you can hear how it all sounds. So nice and crisp for sure, and I had no issues in terms of like post travel on any of the buttons or the paddles, everything here feeling good. So then obviously with it being wireless, they are using their same BAMP sensor. It's their proprietary sensor made in collaboration with Pixar, same one for the Model O wireless. It's got 400 IPS tracking speed, a maximum of 19,000 DPI, and 100 hertz polling, all configurable inside the software. We'll touch on that in a little bit. It has a very, very low 2.08 milliseconds of latency and can reach up to five meters from the dongle. So really, zero complaints on my end. Obviously, if there was an issue, I would bring that up. So with my time gaming and testing it, I did a boneheaded move of mainly playing Battlefield 2042. With those early access tests and betas and stuff, uh, I can't record any gameplay. So that sucks. Gotta say though, super pumped for that. So I had to switch back to Battlefield 5 for a bit. And like I just alluded to, with this sensor, it feels buttery. I usually game between 6 to 800 DPI. On my Viper Ultimate, I was mainly at around 650. For here, I had it just around 700, I guess we could say. I guess I mainly play at those lower DPIs because I enjoy sniping in Battlefield, so I'm just more used to that setting. But I can definitely confirm their claims of, you know, real low latency here. I just had zero issues. No hiccups, no interruptions, no spin outs, no double clicks, nothing at all. Plus with my Razer Strider mouse pad that I use, it's a very nice sort of hybrid pad, very similar to the Heian. You combine that hybrid surface with their PTFE feet here. It's 100% pure feet, so a nice smooth glide. I don't know, I just feel like for me, right around 700 DPI is a good sweet spot. But again, that's just me. 
And I'll tell you, a real nice, lightweight, ergonomic mouse like this uh, feels great because I have been a pretty big fan of the SteelSeries Prime Wireless, and that's just around 80 grams. So a little over 10 grams shed here. Yeah, you still have the honeycomb cut out on like the back side of the shell where your palm is. But I mean, let's be real, that's covered most of the time. I don't know, it's just a real noticeable difference switching from my Viper Ultimate to the Prime Wireless now to the lightweight ergo shape of this. And then real quick, we'll talk about their software, which is Glorious Core. And to note, this is actually different software from the wired version of their mice. So you do have to download this instead. It's very simple. It does show you like sort of two battery level indicators on the left tab and on the bottom right here. It's rated for up to 71 hours, which is absolutely crazy. I game most of the time with the RGB at 50% and at a static color, so it doesn't drain as quick. By the way, you can also use the mouse while it's charging. And speaking of which, the first tab here is lighting. And again, obviously, if you disable RGB or you make it a less, you know, dramatic, crazy effect, you're also going to save some battery as well. So here, if you can control which effect you want, the color, the brightness, all that. You then have their key bindings where you can go in and reprogram any of the six actual buttons on the mouse itself to be whatever you want. It's all there on the right side. What you can then change the button to. Macros, shortcut, single key presses, keyboard functions, all that stuff. Then the last performance tabs where you can go in and change your DPI. You can make up to six DPI stages saved to the mouse. The DPI is also adjustable in increments of 10. And here you can also do things like adjust your liftoff distance, the debounce time, and your polling rate. But yeah, very simple self-explanatory software. One thing though is they're using the picture of the Model D because you could still see the honeycomb sort of cutouts there. So I assume they're going to update that. Now I'm sitting here and I seriously cannot think of a single con or a negative point about this mouse. My entire experience has been a 10. So at the end of the day, it comes down to you, obviously, with your hand size, your preferred grip, and your preferred shape. And for me personally, the Model D wireless checks off a lot of those boxes, pretty much all of them, if you're looking for a new wireless ergo shaped mouse. And when I was trying to figure out how to formally articulate this review and, you know, end it, it came down to one very obvious point, the price. Real quick, let's take a look at the other leaders in the wireless mouse market right now. Viper Ultimate, very, very popular, launched around 140 to 150. The uh, Logitech G Pro X Superlight, launched for 150, but they're symmetrical. So how about the leader right now in the Ergo market, right? One of my favorites, a mouse that I've been maining for like two, three months now, the SteelSeries Prime Wireless, that launched for 130, I believe. So the Model D Wireless, where does this come in at? Well, it's $80. Yes, 80 bucks, nearly half the price of the other leaders in the wireless mouse market right now, uh, giving you almost half off the competition. And it more than holds its own against all those. And it's just crazy to see how Glorious is making such great affordable options out there and really not cutting corners anywhere. So at the end of the day, like I said, depending on your hand size, your grip, all that stuff, what you're looking for in a mouse, the Model D Wireless gets that dub. I said before, I had no issues with connectivity. Gaming was great. You have great battery life, updated switches for 80 bucks. What more could you want? The Model D Wireless. There's your answer. Now to wrap up this review, hope you enjoyed. If you want to check it out, I'll have a link for you in the description down below. And if you like this review, give it a big thumbs up and show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.